This video will be the first of two videos about functions. I'm going to make two videos about this subject and then a practice because it's quite complicated. Anyways, let's get into functions. So what is a function? So you've all seen loops already. You all know what a loop is. A loop is something that you use to execute a piece of code multiple times, right? Well, a function allows you to execute code multiple times as well, but in a different way. So for example, if I were to write a loop, I'd write a loop from this line to maybe this line, and this would execute this code one time. It would execute the code inside of the loop many times, but only in one instance. Whereas a function allows me to store a bunch of code and use it anywhere in the program. So I could do five lines here of something, then use the function there or all the code in the function, then five more lines and use the function again, etc, etc. I can even put a loop in a function, right? Now then, let's have a look how functions are made. And I'll explain a bit more what I mean by we can use functions over and over again like that. Okay, right. So I'll make a little multi-line comment. And this is how a function is structured. So we've got the func uh, keyword, we've got the name of the function that we want to call it. And then inside of these uh, curly brackets, we have some code to be executed. Okay. End of uh, multi line comment. So, what what is the use of this? Why would we want this? And then what does it do? Well, I'll show you. So. We've got, for example, the func keyword to make uh, something like this. And we'll call it, I don't know, print things. Okay. All we need is that. There. Yep. So we've got the, uh, cur the um, parentheses, curly brackets here. And then we'll put down whatever we want to print. So we want to print, my name is David. Good print. Your name is something else. My name isn't David, but you know. So we'll run that. Let's see if it works. Yep, that's fine. What, what's the point of it then? Okay, so this function here, we just write that out, and we put the parentheses, and it executes all the word, all the stuff that we've defined. So what I meant when I said that we can use this multiple times, but, you know, throughout the, uh, throughout the code, instead of using it once and it executes multiple times in the same loop, is exactly what I said. So we can make a variable here, b equals 99, variable c equals 88, variable D equals avar, okay? And after that, we can reuse once again the print things function, okay? You see that? So we've done, we've looked at all these variables and then we've used the print things. So I can use this function over and over again at any point within my code, okay? And so can anyone, right? And so the idea of the function is that you write a bunch of code into a function and you can use this code anywhere you like within your program at any point, okay? As long as the function is valid, but I'll go into that later on. Easy enough. So let's let's think of some of the uses of a function. So we might have function special special number, for example, and we might print a number. I don't know. We might print the number 88 is our special number okay now you might look at this and think when would i ever use this special number okay when would i ever need to print out to the user that the number 88 is our special number let's assume for example you've made a game right and the number 88 in a scene or maybe in a few episodes and scenes of the game is like maybe some kind of something that has some kind of strange significance in the game it might be tied to let's say it's a murder mystery it might be tied to the murder or something like that 
So it has a use case. So we might have to use it several times uh, within our code. We may have to use it several times um, for whatever reason, right? Now, instead of just printing things and getting printed out things or whatever, we can actually return data types. We can get data types from these functions. So let's say, for example, we wanted something that added up two numbers that are predefined. So we'll say function uh, add numbers. Okay, or should we just say function um, predefined addition because we're not we're not actually adding new numbers, right? And then we put here this we put our data type that we're on to turn. Okay. So let's say we want I don't know a couple of numbers. We'll say let b1 equals nine. Let b2 equals two. Let b3 equals 21, right? And we want to add these numbers up and return that addition and get that addition, right? We don't want just the printed value um, because we want to use the number. If we print it, we, we can see the number, but we can't actually use it in calculations, right? So all we've got to do is use this word return here. And we'll say return b1 plus b2 plus b3 okay quite simple and then if i say print pre or let's say actually variable dd equals predefined addition and then i print that variable and it should work out here okay and we get 32, which I'd assume is the addition of this. So what we've actually done here is I haven't printed out this value. I've actually been given an integer value. So it returns the data type that you specify here when you've got a function of this format, right? And so I can actually use that integer and assign it to the variable here. You see how that variable is actually equal to whatever this returns? And then I can print that out. Or... You know, I might use it, let's say I'm making a website and a user wants to see, you know, a certain edition or whatever. They can see it there instead of having a print statement. So it can be used for a real life application and not just seen in the system printout, right? So let's have a look at the um, way that this is actually uh, formulated. So we've got func, which is a keyword, but the name of the function. And then we use a dash and a greater than sign. And then we specify a data type. Okay. And then we can return that data type. So we execute some code. Then we return the specified data type for further use. Okay, so another example I can give you of this is, let's say we want a string, okay? We want a specific string, or we've got a predetermined string that we want to use for who knows what, right? So we say symbolic string, okay? And we're going to just put this yeah, after the funk and uh, all that. So here we've announced that we want to return a string, right? And now we'll say, I don't know, let's say variable h equals what string? Hello. And then we'll say variable h h equals world. And then we'll return h plus space plus oops plus h h right now what could I use this for so let's say I have 
variable gg is equal to my name is mark plus symbolic string. That's worked. Now, sorry, I should have printed that out. So I'll print out gg. And we'll see that we get hello. My name is Mark. Hello world, right? So I can use this for whatever thing. There's actually better ways of using this, but I'll show you in the next video that really what you want to be concerned with is essentially that a, a function just allows you to execute code wherever in your program for whatever reason. So you might have other reasons why you would use symbolic string. You might want hello world not you might not want this to be kept in a variable for example okay you might want to have a different variable that has hello world but not manipulate it in any way you don't know that there, there may be many reasons why i'd use these type of functions i'll be honest with you from my perspective these type of functions they're not really that useful these aren't the functions that we're looking at but this is just to give you a basic picture of you know some kind of function you can execute all right so I'll just go over the program fundament the video fundamentals so here we have the method in which or the way in by which you would declare a function so we use the keyword func followed by the name of the function um, followed by parenthesis then obviously curly brackets open and close curly brackets the code that we want to execute within those curly brackets and so you can see here we've made this function print things and it prints my name is David then it prints your name as something else right and all I've got to do in order to call this function is just copy and paste that just use that there and the whole point is instead of having to do it in a loop and do it hundreds of times or have to do it you know have to copy and paste this code and use it in different parts of um, of our code I can just simply use this word this function instead of having to do all of this in the code block so let's imagine this code block contained 50 lines of code for example right it'd be very difficult to keep copy and pasting 50 lines of code it's you know it's the same as i've said with loops for example but this is just a different way of implementing uh, or reusing code over and over again the difference with this is rather than using it multiple times um, in one place like you would with a loop, you can use it throughout the, uh, the code that you're writing, as and when it suits you, depending on what it does. You know, like I said here with special number, it prints out that the number 88 is our special number. That seems, you know, like I said, it would be useless, but, you know, let's say, you, like I said, if you were making a murder mystery game, this could be useful. It might be a theme in the game, so you'd have game code here, you might have 100 lines of game code, then a reminder that's printed out using special number, and... It might carry on like that for quite a while within one scene of the game, for example, yeah? Here, we've seen that um, instead of just, you know, having a predefined function that can only return print or only modify things, we can actually get data types back from uh, our functions instead of just printing out things. So, if I print this out, I can't actually use this as a string because it's printed out to here. However, here, if I get this int and I get that returned to me, I can now use this integer and put it to a, assign it to a variable. I could do maths with it. So, for example, let's say, I don't know, let's say I want to do some mathematics. Variable gi is equal to predefined addition times 30. Okay. And I'll print that out. That's something completely new. That's something completely new. It should come here after this 32. Let's run that. We've got 960. Something completely new has been made thanks to this predefined addition. Now, obviously, I could put this in a variable or I could just put the number 32 in a variable. But there may be reasons why we use a function instead of a variable, which, as I say, I'll get into in the next video. And here is the formula for you know, returning a data type, so you get the function, the func um, predefined keyword, you 
add a name of any kind. This we don't call it name, we just put any name we want in substitute of this word name here. Then we've got parentheses. Then we've got a dash followed by a greater than symbol. The data type we want as our return value. We then execute, put some code to be executed in, and then we return the specified data type for further use. So for example, here we want a string to be returned. Okay. And we execute some code, which is this, and then we return our string. Or we, we return a string. It doesn't actually have to do anything, have to do with any of this. Might might not even be related. We might do this for a different reason. We don't know. But in the end, if we specify a data type to be returned, we have to return a data type, right? And here you can see, you know, where you might use that. Right, I'm going to clear um, this up. I'm going to show you some actual, you know, useful applications of this in the next video. But anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.